Hey guys, thank you for joining me for our reading the Bible together. We are going to look at today Psalm 91. Uh, it's 16 verses. It's not very long. And uh, let's just read it. Uh, it could be a comforting psalm. Uh, let's well, let's pray first for insight, and then let's ask God to open his word to us. Dear Lord, we thank you that we can put time aside in the day and gaze on you and ponder your truth and that you've made yourself known for those who seek you, that you're here near. You're not far from any one of us. You're here to be seen, to be known. Just thank you that we can uh, seek you and find you. And I just pray now through your word, Lord, that you open our hearts uh, so that the word comes alive in spirit and truth in our lives today, wherever we find ourselves, that it comes alive in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's read Psalm 91. Uh, let me get my readers on. All right. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he who holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's the end. 16 verses. So listen, you know, with, with Scripture, there's a, uh, it's living, it's active. This is the Word of God. You can, we can come to God debating. He sees the heart, right? If you're coming to God with sincere questions and you're grappling, that's fine. We see through Scripture and through the Psalms and everywhere, God is up for that. You read Job, just the, the intense dialogue. Moses in Exodus 33, he, he dialogued with God like straight talk, like, well, you know, you said you'd go with me, but you've raised up no one. I mean, Straight talk, God is for that. Jacob in Genesis 22 wrestled with God all night and overcame, we're told. Very mysterious. God is okay with honest grappling. He sees the heart. People want to know the deep things of God. So people can come to God and say, Lord, you said you protect, but this person wasn't protected. And there's an agony, right? Um, that's okay if you come in faith faith because if you come in faith my friends you come where the battle's not over there's still things you can accomplish if you come just as a critic so in luke 19 
I think it's in Luke 19, you know, God gives talents to different people. And one, instead of investing what he was supposed to invest, he comes, he doesn't do what he's supposed to do with it, what we often don't do with faith and with the word. We don't do what we're meant to do with it. We stand off here and just pick holes and debate it. When that happened, when the person hadn't invested what they were called to invest, and then they gave the master or the Lord a big spiel about this philosophical, I know that you and you're a harsh man and shrewd. The master was having none of it. God sees the heart and he says to him, after this guy gave him a great excuse for how he dealt with his resources and basically disobeyed. Then the master said, I will condemn you with your own words, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a severe man, taking what I did not deposit, reaping what I did not. So why then did you not put my money in the bank? Uh, blah, blah, blah. And he said to those who stood by, take the mina from him and give it to the one. That verse, verse 22, Luke 19, 22, you wicked servant. Uh, that that was the, the, the judgment call of God when this guy started trying to debate God, but really his heart was just dark. If we come to God with Psalm 91 and we come to God with promises of protection and we face things that haven't been protected, you can come to God with intense disappointment, agony, anger, like Martha did when Jesus didn't show on time to keep her brother from dying in John 11. She said, if you had been here, he would not have died. But, but my friends, what I say to you is come in faith because the story's never over if you come in faith, even where there's been a broken heart, where there's been something that wasn't protected and you come and you debate and you say god you said you would protect and this innocent person was attacked and where were you and they believed on you and if you intercede and stand in the gap believing in god not that he slept or slumbered but that there's something disappointing that breaks your heart because he said he would protect and you need there was protection needed and you didn't see it. God, where are you? Jesus cried that on the cross. Matthew 27, 46. My God, my God, where are you? Why have you forsaken me? And he was quoting Psalm 22, 1. There are experiences in this broken, sinful, dark life where the innocent are victimized. That is what we watch on the news. And we can say, God, where are you? But we need to come believing he's a protector. He loves, he will judge. He doesn't slumber or sleep. Psalm 126 something, I think. He doesn't slumber or sleep. 121. Anyway. So we can come and say, Lord, Lord. And we weep with those who weep. Uh, Romans 12, 15. And then we say, Lord, show up. Judge. Heal restore turn this around and god will act he will act you see as humans we we only ever really come in the moment if you come upon brokenness in the moment as a person of faith then bring god's healing in that moment we claim those promises we can argue with god god where were you but regardless we trust in your promises we're here now. We're interceding now. We want protection. We want healing. We're going to believe you for it. So always act in the moment. If you get before, if you come before something is broken down, pray for protection that, Lord, you're a protector. We're going to trust you. You said that, that uh, the night, what is this one? Uh, you will not fear the terror of the night. You said, Lord, these things won't harm us. We're going to sleep in peace, Psalm 4, 8. I will lie down and sleep in peace for you alone, O Lord. Claim through your faith, honor God by trusting in his steadfast love. That's, that's another verse in the Psalms somewhere. The Lord delights in those who trust in his unfailing love. Don't look at the disasters. Blame God and check out or you lose your power. Come in faith, and even if you're distressed or disturbed by the panorama of brokenness here, say, we know a good God. He's a redeemer. Joel 2.25, he will restore the years stolen. 
God hates the evil that happened. He will judge. He will protect. We're believing him for a change. Friends, this doesn't answer all the dilemmas and the drama, but I'm just saying this is what's reflected in Scripture, that men of God will show up in places where there has been harrowing disaster, and it's in that moment they bring the truth of God through faith, repentance, appeal, intercession, right? And that's you. You are a royal priesthood. 1 Peter 2, 9 to 10, you are a, per, a people now and you once weren't a people. That's what it says. 1 Peter 2, 10, 9 to 10. Once you were not a people, now you are a people. And I, I, I believe when I read these things about God's presence and protection and I see the brokenness of the world, I decide I'm going to be a warrior that ministers this pro, uh, protection through my faith. And I often pray with people and I you know, pray and claim God's protection over them, right? So move in the moment and move forward in the moment and trust God with the past, but continue to minister his truth. So claim these promises for people. Claim these promises today for you. Claim these promises when you meet someone who needs protection. Say, I'm going to step in the gap. Ezekiel 33, no, 22, uh, where he says, uh, 2230, I believe, when God is like, where is there someone to stand in the gap for these people? Ezekiel 2230, stand in the gap and say, I'm going to believe, Lord, that there'll be no terror by night tonight over my brother and my sister here. I believe that your, your angels will protect them. Shadow of the Almighty here tonight. We're claiming that by the blood of Jesus. Minister and claim these passages in faith for the people around you. Here's a beautiful one. I love this one. Psalm 91, 7. A, a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. There can be disaster all around you sometimes, friends. I feel, I've felt this, I've experienced this, where it comes like right up to my door, and yet it's a million miles away because God has decreed protection. Revelation 3, 8, when God shuts a door, no man can open it. Whether whether the, the noise builds up and it comes rushing at your door. If God has shut a door, no man can open it. A thousand fall, 10,000 at your right hand. It's right next to you. And God says it may as well be a million miles away. It will not come near you. <sighs> Claim it. Say, Lord, yes, I need that protection. Lord, yes, pour this out on me. Pour this out on my brother today. Pour this out on my sister. Pour this out on this ministry as they go down here or go over there. Pour out this protection and give us advance. So this is a beautiful psalm to claim, my friends, and uh, just to, to, to live it, to enter in it, to jump in it like you're jumping in cool waters, deep waters, soak and sink into it and live it. Ponder it at night so that your mind is on this goodness. Believe it in your heart so that it comes alive around you. Minister it to other people. God loves you, my friends. You're powerful. You're loved. We'll leave it there. Psalm 91.